Hey everyone, welcome to Code, where in this video we're going to learn how to create a React app with routing from scratch using Express, Webpack, and React Router. So here's a demonstration of what we're going to build. So we have three routes, our home, about, and contact. Each one of these are being accessed through a link tag using React Router DOM, and they're also making API calls to Express. So if we open up our network tab, say we zoom in here, click this, we can see we have an API request to home. And if we look at our express server code, we have some API routes that we created. And the home one will just send a JSON message like this. Um, also, our about route will receive some API data, which is this here. Um, the contact will. And this entire React application and all the routing is being handled by Express. So also, if we don't use, say, we're also going to learn about uh, client-side routing versus server-side routing. But for example, say, instead of navigating with the React Router DOM link tags, and we actually make a call to this route right here, it'll be served up by Express. So if we look here, for example, when we make these changes, we see an API call, but we don't see a new HTML document being requested. But if we refresh the page, we get a new HTML document here. And of course, this is all being served up with Express. And this is all also in development, so we can make live uh, updates and everything will be reflected. So we can see this stuff being reflected here. Um, we can also update our API routes. So say the home page, we want it to return just some other stuff tagged on like this. And we click home. We can see it's instantly changed right here. So we're going to be building all of this from scratch. Okay, so we're going to start this project with just a completely empty directory. And the first thing we're going to do is just create some environment variables in a file called .env. And this will contain information such as the location of our Express server. I'm just going to paste this in. And also our node environment to be development. So these variables will be loaded into React using Webpack, and then they'll be loaded into the entire application just using Node. Next thing we're going to do is just set up our project. So we're going to initialize it with npm init es6-y. Next, we just want to install both Webpack and Webpack CLI as development dependencies. And so we're going to use Webpack to turn our React code into JavaScript code that the browser understands. However, for Webpack to do this, we need to install a Webpack loader. The loader we are going to be installing is called Babel Loader. And so a loader is a function that Webpack uses to convert code from one form to another. Webpack will use this Babel Loader to convert JSX code into code that the browser understands. So basically React code into regular JavaScript. We also have some plugins, so Babel Preset ENV and Preset React to help with converting our React code. Next thing we need to do is we need to install a plugin for Webpack, and this is called the HTML Webpack plugin. And so a plugin allows us to plug into Webpack's lifecycle. The HTML Webpack plugin will apply our bundled React code to an HTML file. Now let's install Nodemon, and we're installing Nodemon because so we can reload our Express server whenever it changes. And now inside our package.json file, let's just set our main entry point, which will be server.js. And then we're going to create a start script. And all this is going to do is run our entry point with Nodemon, and we're also going to supply an env file called .env to load our environment variables. Note that to use this dash dash env flag, you need to be using node version 20.11 or higher. So if not, you'll have to use something like .env, or you can just bump up your node version so you can use this helpful flag. But these are all the packages we need until we start working with React. Now let's actually start configuring Webpack to convert our React code into regular JavaScript. And so I'm just going to paste a lot of code in here, and I'm just going to go over what all of it does. So first, right here, we set our mode equal to development. This will, Webpack will do a few things under the hood, such as setting the node env environment variable to development and enabling certain plugins. And then we set the target to web, and we set it to web as React applications work in the browser. We set our entry point, and this is where Webpack will start the bundling process. We then specify our output right here, which is how we can configure the bundle that Webpack outputs, which will be our React application. It's going to be a file called bundle.js inside a folder called dist. Note that this public path right here is very important, as this tells Webpack where to output its bundled files to. So this is essentially going to be where on the Express server our React application will be accessible, which will be the main route for us, or an index.html file, essentially. But we'll see more of this in action later. Next, we have our plugins right here which of course tap into Webpack's lifecycle. And here we're telling Webpack to place our bundled JavaScript in the provided HTML file. So place our React code in, into here. 
and then we're setting some environment variables. So this plugin right here will place these environment variables into our React application. And then finally we have these rules down here, and these rules tell Webpack how to handle a certain module. And here we're telling Webpack to pass any JavaScript or JSX file, excluding the ones in node modules. I also need to escape this right here. We're telling Webpack for any file ending in .js or .jsx, pass it through the Babel loader. So this is all we need to do for now with our Webpack configuration. Now let's start working on creating our React app with routing. First thing we're gonna do is install both React and React DOM. And so React is of course the core library for React and React DOM renders the React app in the DOM. And now let's install the React router DOM library from NPM. So it's just called React router DOM. And this library contains all the bindings for using React router in a web application. And React Router, what that is, is it's a JavaScript framework that lets us handle client-side routing in React. In other words, we can use it to create a single page app that provides navigation without a page refresh. And we saw a bit of this in our demonstration. Now let's start creating our code files. So we're gonna create a directory called source. Then at the top level, we're gonna have our server.js file, which is our express server. Then we're gonna have our React app, which is gonna be called client. And in the top of here, we're gonna have an index.html file. And for this, I'm just gonna paste in some HTML code. The most important part of this here is this div with the ID root. And this is what the React DOM package will use to create our React app. And now let's create the glue between our DOM and React app. And this is gonna be in an index.jsx file. And once again, I'm just gonna paste in the code for this. But essentially, first we are just importing some React libraries and components that we're gonna create. Then we create a browser router and this router allows us to add routing to our web application, so client-side routing. Then we create a parent element called layout, and this will make it so all child components will be rendered inside this. So all of these here will be rendered inside our layout component. And this is because we're gonna have our layout component hold our navigation links, basically in the header of each page. And then we have our component for each route. So dash about takes us to the about app component, the home route takes us to home, and so on. Next, we pass the router to our router provider. And this will tell the React router how to render the React app. And then finally, we just render our React application in our div with the ID root. But now let's create this components directory. And the first component we're gonna create is our layout component, which is gonna be our parent component. And in here, first what we do is we import an outlet element or an outlet component. And this tells the parent component where to render its children. So it's gonna say to render, where was it in here, render all of these inside this outlet component. So then we have a header, which will contain our navigation links on each page. So now let's create this header component. It's gonna be called header.jsx, and then I'll paste this in here. So first what we're doing is we're importing our link component, and this allows us to add client side routing to our web app without doing a full document request, which we also saw in the demo. And then we create a link for each one of our routes. Now let's create each one of our components. So each one of these pages right here. So we have home.jsx, I have to move that in here. We have about.jsx and we have contact.jsx. So the first one, these are all essentially gonna be the same, but for about, we just are gonna post, return essentially an H1 saying about, and then this is gonna be some API data that we're gonna retrieve from our express server using this use fetch hook that we're gonna create. And this is just gonna be the same in each one of our components. So in our contact, we're also gonna say contact, and then we're gonna list out some API data that we get from our express server. And then the final one, so we have our about contact. Now we just need to paste in our home, which once again does the same thing. But now let's create this use fetch hook, which is just gonna be a simple hook inside a hooks folder. Call it usefetch.js. And so now I'm just gonna paste in the code for this. And essentially what we do is we just create some state to hold our data. We create an abort controller, which can stop the request when the component unmounts. So if our component unmounts in this use effect hook, we will stop this request from going. And this is of course, so we don't change the state on an unmounted component because this can cause some memory leaks. But essentially when the component mounts, we're gonna make a, requ a request to our express server with the provided path that we put in here. And then we're just gonna set our data or log out an error. That's all we need for our Express, or sorry, for our React app. Now let's create our Express server. And of course, we're gonna have our Express server serve up our React application that we just made. 
So to begin, let's install Express with npmi express. Now inside our server.js file, I'm going to paste in some code where essentially we're just going to import Express and get the application listening for requests. And so what we do is these are from our environment variables. We create, create our Express app. We add some logging. So for each request we receive, we'll log out the request method and URL before going to the next middleware. Then we're going to add our API routes. So this will be dash API dash home dash API dash about because we are specifying app.use dash API and then providing our API router. And then we're just listening on the provided port and host. But now to serve our React app from the server, we need to get Webpack and Express to work together. And we can do this with the package called, paste in here, it's called Webpack Dev Middleware. We'll install this as a development dependency. And so this package emits files processed by Webpack to a server. And we're going to use it to emit our bundled React application to our Express server, which we can then serve to our client. So first, what we need to do is just import this middleware into our Express server, along with the Webpack library itself and our Webpack configuration. And now the next thing we need to do is bind our Webpack dev middleware as application level middleware, which we can do, we can actually do it past our logging middleware. And so we bind this right here. So first what we do is we create a Webpack compiler. So when we import this Webpack library directly, it returns a function that when called returns a Webpack compiler, which we capture right here. We then configure this Webpack compiler by passing in our Webpack configuration, which is this file right here. And then we pass our Webpack compiler and also some options to our Webpack dev middleware. And the important one that's also required is public path. And this will be where the Webpack dev middleware serves our React app from. So we want to make sure this matches right here because Webpack will output our bundle to the public path of just our root path. So we want our Webpack dev middleware to serve up this bundle from there as well. But now the next thing we need to do is we want to add some hot module replacement. And so what this essentially does is gets our application to reload with changes. So when I was showing the demonstration and we saw how when I would make a change, it would reload instantly with these changes. To do this, we need to add something called hot module replacement. And so hot module replacement or HMR detects module changes in an actively running application. And this makes the development process more efficient as it only updates what has changed and instantly updates the browser with these modifications. And we can enable HMR in a custom express server by using the package webpack hot middleware. So this package right here. Next thing we need to do is like the other Webpack middlewares, just import it at the top of our file. And then we just need to add this middleware to the Express server as application level middleware. So right after the dev middleware, just add this right here. And so once again, the first argument to this is our Webpack compiler, and the second is some configuration options. But we also have to make some changes in our Webpack configuration file. So back in here, we need to, in our plugins, add webpack.hotmodule replacement. And so this plugin, the HMR plugin, basically enables Webpack to perform HMR. And then finally, we need to also alter our entry point. So this right here, and we need to change it to an array where the first argument is Webpack hot middleware dash client, and then some configuration options. And so this code right here, what this does is it configures our express server to receive a notification when Webpack builds the client bundle. In other words, when our React application is rebuilt, our Express server will be notified of this, causing it to serve up this new bundle. We can also add some configuration options, such as reload equals to true, which is an option that auto reloads the browser when the Webpack gets stuck. And then we set timeout to 2000, which tells Webpack to wait two seconds or 2000 milliseconds after a disconnection before attempting to reconnect. And essentially we set this timeout because it will stop the server from basically hanging indefinitely which sometimes occurs when using routing with HMR. But so we're basically done now. Um, something I actually, I'm just gonna add is some styling in here just to give it a darker color because I just don't like the blinding white light. But all we need to do now is just run npm start. So if we run this, we can see some helpful logs, but an important one is that our server is listening on localhost 5678. So if we refresh this page, we can see everything seems to be working. So if we go to our about page, we're getting all our API data. Um, we're moving around, it works. Let me see if we change our API call for contact. Just have some stuff like this. If 
we go back to contact there, it's re live reloaded. Let's check actually on our contact page, add some stuff here and it refreshes. But an issue we can see is we cannot get this contact route. And so this is something we need to talk about, which is essentially client side versus service side routing. So if we load the, load the homepage, everything's fine. When we're doing client side navigation like this, it's all working. But if we make an actual request like this, essentially we're asking express for dash about, but we don't have in our server.js file, we don't have a route in here where we're handling dash about. We, the only one we have is our API routes. So of course we can call API dash home. We can see our messages here. And we also have a main route like this, which is where our React application is being served from. So what we need to essentially do is redirect certain calls to our index.html file. So redirect, for example, dash about like this to this route here. So it serves up our index.html file and then applies our client side or React magic. So to actually further demonstrate this too, instead of just using the URL search bar, if we go into our header component here and let's change these links to be anchor tags. So now that these are anchor tags, we'll actually do a page refresh when we click them. So we can see none of these are working except for the home one, but let's, let's fix this now. And so to reroute our requests to our index.html file, we need to use the, a package called, let me uh, resize our window here again. It's called connect history API fallback. And we'll install this as a development dependency. And so this is a very small and simple middleware that essentially just changes the requested location of the single page application whenever there is a request that follows a few rules. And um, I'll just paste them in right here. It's also on their website, but so if it's a get or head request that accepts text or HTML, it's not a direct file request. So not like looking for a JavaScript or CSS file, and it does not match a pattern provided as a rewrite, which is an option that we're actually gonna set. So that'll make more sense in a bit. But essentially, if a request follows all these rules, then it'll redirect it to our index.html file, which is our React app. And we want that to happen when we're making a call to dash about. So back in here, the first thing we need to do is just import this library. So the top of our server, Express server, import it like this. And now we need to just place this middleware before the Webpack dev middleware. So here's our Webpack dev middleware right here. We just need to make sure we place this right before this. So what we're doing here is we're adding some useful logging to the console. And then we have a rewrite rule for our API routes, which essentially means we don't want to rewrite our API calls to our index.html file because we are actually serving up API data here. So if we ever make an API call, then it'll essentially continue to that route. Whereas if we're making a call to dash about, dash contact, anything like that, it will be redirected to our index.html file, which is our home page or our React application. So after we've done this, we just need to run npm start again. Our server started listening. And let me move this over. And we can see some helpful logging over here. So for example, this is our React bundle. We're not rewriting it because it's a file that we're looking for. We're not rewriting our bundle.js. We're not rewriting our hot module reloading or our API calls. Or we are rewriting them just to where they are, I guess is what the log message says. But if now, if we make a call to about, we'll see, where is it? Down right here, request to get about, rewriting get dash about to index.html. So now all these are working whenever we move around. But of course, the reason we were using React or one of the reasons is we want to keep using our link tags here because we want to handle the routing on the client with JavaScript so we don't make a full page refresh. So we'd rather actually have it like this using our link tag. But now if we make a call to about like this, we won't have any issues thanks to that middleware. But so this is my video on how to create a React application with routing using Express. If you have any questions, leave them for me in the comments and I'll try and get back to you. Um, if you want to support me, please consider downloading my Chrome extension called Witceptor and leave me a good review. The link will be in the description. But besides that, thank you for liking and subscribing. Hope to see you in the next one. Have a good one.